Now, my next guest was one of the biggest TV stars of the 80s and 90s, of course. Most recently, you would have seen her sharing her incredible life history with uh, our very own Kate Garraway. You must watch that. It's on ITVX if you haven't yet. It's really, really spellbinding. And, of course, Ruby Wax is now heading out on tour with the stage adaptation of her book, which is called I'm Not As Well As I Thought I Was. Ruby, welcome. Hi, thank you. Um, thanks. Uh, first of all, Life Stories was amazing. OK, it was, thanks. It, what was the reaction after...? I don't you... know. I mean, I, I loved her. That's all I cared about. Well, she's in the building. I think she's I coming to see, come and say hello. Did you...? I mean... I don't, she's so good, I don't really know what I said. Oh. So it was like meeting a girlfriend. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. That is absolutely perfect. And now this book, interestingly, people will think, what don't we know about Ruby, in mm. a way? But tell us what the book is about. And, of course, this is now into the tour, which is starting quite yeah. soon. Yeah, so um, the, the book is... Uh, it's a little complicated. The original thing was that during lockdown, and I think a lot of people thought this way, is that with nothing to do, uh, you had time to face yourself because you had nobody to talk to. So I thought, come on, let's change how you live your life, Ruby. Let's move it a, a gear up. You know, let's find some, I know, meaning. Yeah. Um, and so I decided I'd go on... I didn't know how to do that. I'd go on these epic journeys to give me some ideas. So just to tell us what the epic so journeys were. So some of them were, were a 30-day silent retreat. I tried to get people out of Afghanistan. I worked in a refugee camp. I worked in a... Um, I, I um, went, lived in a Christian monastery. There were other ones. And you did, there was something to do with humpback whales as oh, well? Oh, I went swimming with humpback whales. Not really to find meaning, but uh, they... Anyway, it's kind of life-changing things if you, if you really pay attention. But I kept gazumping it. You know, every time I do something, and you would learn things, you know, you don't go on a 30-day retreat and come out the same way you went in. Because your mind eventually, it's got no telephones and it's got no distractions. So it finally just pulls up a white flag of surrender and goes, OK, and it gets quiet in there. And you become, you can taste food for the first time. And you can watch an ant go up and down a leaf without getting bored. You get quite still. And you think, I'm really a fabulous person instead of that, nah, 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 nah. But then when I came out, I did an ad for potato crisps within 24 hours and went back to my routine. And that's the thing, isn't it? Because I suppose we, we all want that quick fix or we want something no quick to, fix. to fix our life and that we all come out and be some sort of amazing sort of, you know, Buddhist, calm, but we've been asked, mindful we've been human being. for our whole life, so it's hard to break. And so have you learned that it's a continual thing? You have to almost... You have to actively make yourself feel well every single well, day. You and if you don't, on... if you, you don't, then the old routine gets back in exactly. very quickly. You go back to your triggers. It's like, you know, being an addict in a way. Everybody starts to perk you up. You start to use your face jerk your way into, you know, into that smile that you used to be. And you weren't that at all once you had these experiences. You know, you become compassionate or you become religious faith. or And you think, oh, I feel... I'm with my people here. And then you go back and everybody treats you a certain way and you become that. But what I didn't know yeah. is that after some of those journeys, I wasn't expecting this one. I haven't had depression for 12 years and I got it. So I ended up in a mental institute. And that is a complete antithesis, mm. presumably, of what you expected. Well, it, <clears throat> do you think I was prepared no. for that one? So I, I wrote the book from a mental institution, and it's very... Um, Did I you can... actually write it when you were in... No, not when you're sick. You no. Can't, you can't even move your right arm, let alone know where it is. Uh, but afterwards, and it was May 11th that I was... I was uh, put in there and this uh, is last is this last year you yeah. were in a mental institution and the, but I got a really good therapist yeah. which I hadn't done in 25 years and she did a therapy so she takes you down and down and in the in the play I use the real therapist's voice and you watch what she does and when we got to the bottom of it I found out something about me I had no idea and that made sense so why I run so hard you know, what am I running from? So... Cos you say in the book something about um, filling in all the airtime. Yeah, I Filling all the airtime. Well, it's something happened in my home. Mm. So you do a journey down, which was... Uh, I had no idea. I mean, my parents locked me in the house. No idea. Mm. So that's why as soon as I get out, I really have to run all mm. the time. And now you sort of... Once you know that, you kind of go, it's OK, Ruby, it was your survival. And so the, so the, the, the tour, which starts... In September, September. September 15th. Yeah, fantastic. It goes all over the UK. It's amazing. And that is you acting, is it, as well? I am and, acting. Which is brilliant, because, of course, we learnt in, uh, in the life stories that you went to the Royal Shakespeare Company, yeah. things that we didn't really know about you before. Well, You're going back to acting. I, it's acting. It's not like the book. 
but I use the book as a kind of, you know, yes. basic idea. But you're, um, you're kind of going back and forth to this outer journey and then this inner journey. And, um, and I think that's the most interesting. If it was just me hunting for meaning, it's just a travel book. Isn't it? It's an extreme travel book, but once you start going down here and people go, oh, that's me too. I, I think yeah. that way too. I find that absolutely fascinating because as you say, we look to the external world for so much and yet our inner world could be just churning away and we pay no attention to our inner world. No, no. Some people don't even think they have an inner world, right? They're Cause... probably watching this and saying, what are they talking about, my shoe size? Yeah. But, you know, the reason we frazzle and the reason... Well, which is the name of your cafe, the Frazzle Cafe, which Frazzle is an amazing cafe, idea. Which yeah. you come on for free. Yeah. I run that. Um, the reason we do that is because we don't know what's cooking under the neck. You know, we just, the body just drags its head around like it's a shopping cart. And then we think this is it. Oh, I got through life and I got to the end. Whereas, better look down. Otherwise, you're going to do the same old, same old. And that's not a way to live. And how are you now? In terms of, obviously, you had your, was it six weeks, I think, you, did you spend quite a long time after it, the retreat? In the and, mental ward? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With my people. Yeah. And, you know, I love my people. Yeah. And uh, how do you feel now in I'm yourself? okay. I mean, I, I went in a mental, I don't know what you call it, clinic, Lord, yeah. May 11th, and then my book was pub published a year after, so there is a reward. It's incredible. Well, we wish you well, and I cannot wait. I'm going to come and see you. I can't wait Nails break. to see it. Yeah, it's come absolutely and see me after. So, 14th of September it starts is the start yeah. of your tour. Fantastic. Thank you. Lovely to meet you, Ruby. Thank you. You too.